Let's talk for a second about what's not in the Ten Commandments. There is nothing against slavery in the Ten Commandments. There's nothing against endangering a child in the Ten Commandments. There is nothing against bigotry, racism, sexism, classism in, in the Ten Commandments. There is nothing against blackmail or bribery. There is nothing against the discrimination of LGBTQ people. There's no, no law against incest. There's no uh, commandment against terrorism or torture. There's no t- t- uh, commandment against rape. There is no commandment against the mistreatment, exploitation, and relocation of native populations. It's all right to do that because it's not one of the ten. There is no commandment to treat animals humanely. There is no commandment to take care of the earth's environment. There is no commandment to help others in need. There is no commandment that settles to, to settle disputes peacefully. And there's no commandment to distribute earth, Earth's resources fairly and broadly. This is a list of, of, that I've got off of a, of a, a website. And it, it's a great, great list because it shows you clearly how fallible the Bible is. It shows you how, cle- how clearly fallible it is because the people who believe that the Bible is infallible. They look at this list and they go, well, I would never do that. Well, of course you would never do that. But you probably wouldn't kill either. And you you probably wouldn't, you know, commit adultery or, or the things that are in the Ten Commandments. But these things here, a lot of these things in here are based upon the time, the 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 what was going on in history during that time. These things were allowed. The first one on this list is slavery. The Bible says you can own slaves. It actually flat out says you can own slaves as long as they're from neighboring communities or neighboring countries. It says you can beat slaves as long as they survive because they're your property. You know, you only get in trouble if they die. You know, that's, that's, that's in the Bible. Those are the things that are in the Bible. People look at the Bible and, and they want to make their argument based upon the Bible, right? Bible also says that Adam and Eve were the first two humans on earth. They are the, the origin of man, Adam and Eve. But yet the argument falls apart really quickly when you realize that their children had wives. You know, it, it makes no sense. There's no, there's no truth into the story, but it's just, you know, mythology. It's just metaphor. You know, these are the things. It's like two people sitting by a campfire who have no clue about the universe, and they go, oh, look, somebody put a cover over the sky. All those little pinholes are showing the light on the other side. You know, they, they make up these stories to, to, to fill in the gaps of their knowledge. And what's really interesting to me is a lot of the questions I get about my memories, and, and, the, and my memories are not complete, but there are definitely memories that I have that are very clear. Um, but the, one of the things that I find most interesting is they, they ask me about various miracles and things, and I'm always fascinated because I there, there's big miracles that are in the Bible that I don't remember ever happening. And when you go back and you look at the history of the Bible and the the original text, a lot of those miracles didn't make it into the Bible until after the Nicene Council. You know, they didn't make it into the Bible until much later, until um, un- until Paul's teachings were adapted and then and then changed after the Nicene Council. You know, it it becomes very interesting to see how the Bible is manipulated to to control, to, to um, sway people in believing. And they're using these, these stories and these, these myths to, to 
have us all believe uh, when in reality the story is, is much more beautiful because my friend, Jeshua, right, he was a man who understood his divinity and did, did interesting, miraculous things happen? I believe in some cases they did, but I don't think they happened the way people thought they did. I don't think it happened the way they thought they did. Because if you think about, and I, I mentioned this in another video, we would bypass a city named Beth Sheon. And Beth Sheon, the reason we would bypass that city is because they knew Jeshua as the son of the carpenter. And so healings wouldn't happen there because they couldn't believe they came from the son of a carpenter. It was about their belief, you know. So the healings had to have the person's belief. And if it was, you know, or and to use a, the actual word that's in the Bible, their faith. But faith and belief are the same thing. It's just where, where religions get it mixed up is they, they think it's faith in Jesus. And it's not, that's not the way it was intended at all. It was your belief. You are the creator of your experience. Greater works than I have done, you will do. It is your faith that heals you. Now, your belief, whatever you ask in God's name, you shall receive if you have faith, if you believe. Now, this is like the earliest law of attraction stuff, right? But the other thing is, is that it's so miraculous because he's telling us we have the ability. I will wash your feet because I am no better than you, right? One of the things that I often run into is people who have been deep in religion for a long time, all their whole life, they have a hard time seeing themselves as divine as Jeshua. But Je that's exactly what Jeshua taught. I am no different than you. I am the same as you. We are the, we are the same. I just have a little more knowledge, a little more information. You know, I often talk about the resurrection. Did he resurrect? I believe he did. But I don't think it was the miraculous thing that we all make it out to be. I think it was he understood that he himself is his Holy Spirit and that the body was a representation and all he had to do was shift his consciousness out and then reform his body around his consciousness when he came back. And there's a part in the Bible where people came to, saw him afterwards and they came to hug him. He says, don't touch me I'm, and I'm not fully back. And because he, he was not fully informed yet. They, they were seeing him, but he wasn't, it was a vision, right? And there are famous stories of Hindu, Hindu mystics who would walk to, come to a river and it would be raging and they would they'd look at the other side and they'd say, well, I don't want to ford this river. So they'd project their consciousness, form their body around their consciousness and keep walking. That's reincarnation. They reincarnated the body on the other side of the river. And that's what Jeshua did. So we have the same power, the same abilities that he did, right? And the Bible, even though it has all these misgivings and all these, these things that are not uh, in alignment with anything he taught, right? Even though, even though those things are in there, the story is, is they were meant to get you to believe. They were meant to get you to believe and and. The reality of it is that those methods of teaching, those methods of getting people to believe, actually were harmful, harmful to the teachings of Jeshua. And he himself would never have wanted anyone to deify him. You know, a lot like as I said, a lot of people who have come up in religion, they go, I go, I made a video the other day and I said, you know, who represents God for you? And many, many people have said to me, well, Jesus is the representation of God. Well, Jeshua would have said, you are the representation of God. Jeshua would have said, I am the, rep <laughs> the representation of God. You are the representation of God. Each one of us is the representation of God. Each one of us is th the Christ on earth. Each one of us is. The only difference that is that one of them knows it. And you know, I am the son of God. You are the children of God. It's the same exact thing. Only one of them is declaring it, and the other ones haven't declared it yet. 
And what he was here to teach was that you are one with God. The pathway to heaven is through your own door. Your own door, not the door of Jeshua, not the door of Mary, you know, not the door of, of any prophet, messiah, mystic. Your pathway is through your own door. And you've got to come to your own door and your own realizations and realize your own divinity to go to that next level. You know, honor Jeshua's teachings by believing that you are as divine as he, because that's what he taught. That's what he taught. He taught that you and he were the same. You know, I know many of us know people who have skills that we wish we had. You know, I I do fancy bullwhip cracking and nunchuck spinning and all kinds of cool and people always say God I wish I could do that that's that's how Jeshua was we were all like God we wish we, we wish we could do that he kept saying well you can it just comes to a matter of you taking the time and focusing on doing it and, and putting yourself into that state because it is about a state. It's about the feeling, the essence of being the Christ itself, the essence of stepping into love fully. The more you can start loving, the more you start experiencing it. <coughs> and that is, that is the key to the evolution of man. That is the key to us men and women. I don't know gender involved. The, that is the key to us all coming to that space. Forget these things that... that aren't in the Bible that are bad. You know, we, we just don't, we, we would never do them because we are love. And the commandment was to love one another, right? So we wouldn't do these things because they, they would not be the loving thing to do. That's how simple this is. If it's not loving, don't do it. If it's loving, do it. You know, if you're going down the road and you see someone who's in need and you have the means, help them. I, mean, I remember coming home from Baltimore <laughs> one time and I was in the, in, coming out of Baltimore and a guy came up to me on the corner who was begging, begging for uh, just money, any kind of money. And, and you, could tell he, you could tell he needed it. And right on my dash, I had a big giant jar full of change and I mean I, there was probably probably 30 or 40 dollars in change in this jar and I reached over and I picked it up and I handed the jar out the window to the guy I said there you go buddy you know I hope that helps oh thank you so much God bless you sir and I drove home I was in Baltimore I was driving back to Rehoboth Beach Delaware two and a half hour drive I got a half hour from home, ran out of gas because it didn't have any money. <laughs> you know, you also have to make sure you can get home too. <laughs> you have to make sure you're loving yourself as much as you're loving others. You can give away all your money and then not make it home. But what happened when I what happened when I broke down? I ran out of gas. I called a friend of mine who drove an hour to where I was to get me help me get gas. You know. The love you put out is the love that will be returned. All these things in the Bible which make no sense in love are were just things that were, were meant to get you to start following something. But the Bible itself is foul, is, is fallible. And the Bible itself has many stories and, 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 and commandments and thoughts in there that do not meet up with its own commandment of love one another. And so you have to start realizing that spirituality is not the book. Spirituality is how you live your life, how you feel about living your life in the here and now. You know, take the good stuff that you find in the Bible, the love one another's and stuff like that and incorporate them into your life. Because it's not an I was moment, it's an I am moment. You need to take this moment and live love. You, know, you live loving, you love living. That's the way it works. And you gotta 
you have to go out there and, and, and put this into work, no matter what the Bible said. You guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. See you. Bye.